So welcome to Raisina Ideas Pod and to the second day of the Raisina Dialogue. We are joined by a very special guest, Prince Faisal. Prince Faisal, welcome to the Ideas Pod. Thank you very much. We are particularly going to speak to Prince Faisal on the big transformations underway in in Saudi Arabia, one of the fastest growing economies uh, G, on, in the G, G20 countries. I think Saudi Arabia is probably uh, the, the outstanding performer in 2022 uh, and very promising in terms of uh, what's ahead. And we're going to try and discuss some of that with you. The big vision of, the, of uh, MBS, the, the Crown Prince, on uh, the future of the kingdom, on the future of the trajectory of the economy, uh, and the big social transformations, the cultural transformations that are underway. Uh, so Prince Faisal, what is happening in Saudi Arabia? What are the big changes? What is the big vision of the Crown Prince? In India, we normally read about the, your, your country uh, through Western media. Mm -hmm. Now we have you here and we want to hear from you. What's the story of Saudi Arabia? How is it unfolding? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity, and I really appreciate it. It's fantastic to be here in India and at the Raisina Dialogue and uh, to engage uh, on this uh, important stage. Uh, you know, you asked me a question uh, which I could take hours in answering, really, uh, because there's so much going on in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The vision uh, that uh, Crown Prince uh, launched uh, seven years ago, Vision 2030, was all about holistic transformation, holistic transformation uh, of the kingdom uh, in all aspects, uh, economic, social, etc., in a way that uh, builds uh, a pathway to uh, sustainable prosperity for the Saudi people uh, within the context of a changing world. So uh, it, it really addresses all of the challenges that the kingdom faces uh, economically and otherwise in a way, uh, uh, in a very measured way, in a very uh, uh, engaged way, based mainly on understanding where we are and where we need to go. So mm. data is the key part of uh, the, king, uh, the kingdom's vision uh, driven by the crown prince. And you know, w one of the things that he insists on and is very interesting is that we work in a holistic way. Whenever we approach a problem, that we understand it from all angles and that then all parts of the government work to achieve that. In a way, as I said, to build towards this uh, sustainable prosperity for the Saudi people. Uh, and we are already seeing results. We are seeing results in the broad line, you know, the fastest growing economy in the mm -hmm. G20 last year, first time trillion dollar GDP, uh, uh, on track to continue similar levels of growth for the next three to five years at least, uh, probably by 2030, our projections, 10th largest economy in the world. Uh, that doesn't happen uh, without real effort. And as I said, we try to work on every part of the economy, understanding where are the challenges, what are uh, the opportunities, and maximizing those and addressing the challenges. And uh, an example of that is uh, a diversification of the economy away mm -hmm. from a dependence on oil. So we are uh, uh, breaching all of the targets that we had set for 2030. We've already achieved most of them in that regard. Uh, so we are uh, working very hard on multiple fronts, and that includes addressing um, where we stand in the world and uh, you know how we integrate with the global economy in a way that is much more effective and uh, uh, including uh, the issue of climate change so the kingdom has been known as a energy powerhouse and uh, that has been built on its uh, hydrocarbon resources uh, but we continue to invest in that while we invest as well in being part of the renewable future and the kingdom has uh, a huge potential in renewables and we're working on uh, uh, high green hydrogen etc so we will continue to be uh, uh, an energy powerhouse mm. well into the carbon neutral future. Uh, uh, another issue, for instance, has been women's empowerment. So we have uh, uh, now women's participation in the labor force is up to 30%. Uh, uh, you know, we are uh, uh, working towards uh, full employment for women. And that has been very important in addressing uh, the issue out of unemployment. So we have the lowest unemployment rate uh, uh, that we've ever had at about 9.5%. Uh, uh, and, you know, again, breaching targets very effectively. No, I, you know, the last point that you made, that's particularly fascinating. Something that you don't normally uh, read in the news reports that come out of uh, the traditional news media. Uh, the social transformations, mm -hmm. women in workforce, mm -hmm. uh, larger freedoms available to many people, mm -hmm. more progressive modern thinking. How are the youth and how is the society responding to the crown princes very transformational project. I mean, there could be some disruptions as well. Uh -huh. So how is the larger community, the conservatives and the youth, uh -huh. how are they responding to these stimulus? 
I think that's the most uh, interesting part of it. The level of energy that you can sense if you come to the kingdom uh, is infectious. And that's driven by uh, the excitement of the Saudi people uh, you know, about what Vision 2030 is offering. Uh, you, you can see it everywhere you go, in, in Riyadh, in Jeddah, in uh, all of the cities and towns of the kingdom. Everybody is energized by what this vision offers, the opportunities it opens up, but also the space that it opens up for people to really enjoy themselves. You know, as we uh, you know, work towards uh, uh, diversifying the economy, mm -hmm. one of the things that the, the, we have to do, of course, is open up new sectors. And mm -hmm. some of those new sectors are entertainment, are sports. Uh, you know, so the really bringing joy into the public space and uh, uh, making that an effective avenue for people to engage with their community. And so you can sense from that, and that has opened, of course, then the opportunity for Saudi entrepreneurs to become active. So if you come now to Riyadh, you will see Saudi young Saudis opening uh, restaurants. You will see young Saudis opening uh, uh, all kinds of businesses to cater to not the mm -hmm. Saudi population, but also uh, the tourists. You know. So, uh, all of that is creating a certain dynamism. You have all of these now events that are happening in the kingdom, uh, you know, global sports events and global uh, entertainment events, and uh, all of that creates jobs, but it also creates a certain excitement. And of course, uh, Vision 2030, as I said, is all about change, including changing the business environment. So the government has worked very hard to make the business environment more conductive, more conducive to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm to engagement, all of that creates a very, very st strong and excitement among the Saudi people, and I hope also among the international community and the in increasing number of expatriates that are coming to the kingdom. I'm going to come back to that in a bit, but let mm -hmm. me now turn to India and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. um, many would argue that it's been a sea change mm -hmm. uh, in our bilateral relationship uh, mm -hmm. in the last decade, certainly, but yeah. certainly in the last five to six years, mm -hmm. um, we seem to be far more confident of each other. Yeah far more comfortable with each other, mm -hmm. and far more sure and certain of each other. Mm -hmm. There's a degree of certainty in the relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, what has changed? Mm -hmm. And how does Saudi Arabia visualize its uh, emerging relationship, uh, growing relationship, stronger relationship mm -hmm. with India to be for it? Mm -hmm. I would certainly agree. I, I would say that the relationship between the kingdom and India, in the last five years especially, has grown exponentially. Mm -hmm. uh, Part of that is the very strong relationship between uh, Prime Minister Modi and the Crown Prince, uh, who have a very, very strong working relationship. Both of them are very similar in a, in a sense that they both are very result oriented. Mm -hmm. That they, you know, that they don't want just uh, nice talk. They want to see actual results. They want to see progress, and, and that means that we in the government have very clear direction. Uh, certainly, I do from uh, the Crown Prince that uh, we need to work on this relationship, that the relationship with India is a top priority, and that we need to have measurable progress in all sectors, especially the economic and uh, trade relationship. And there we've seen uh, uh, just last year, I think 50% increase in trade, if I'm not mistaken. So a huge, huge uh, growth. Uh, obviously, India is a fantastically dynamic country mm -hmm. with a huge potential. And we've seen that, especially in the last five years, you know, the trajectory for India is uh, 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 you know is fantastic you know it, the potential that india holds is almost unmeasurable and that coupled with the kingdom's uh, equal dynamism equal pro uh, uh, progress and our positions in the world you know we are uh, of course linked historically given the mm -hmm. fact that uh, uh, india has played an important role in our developmental journey for many decades given the large uh, indian diaspora in uh, saudi arabia uh, so that connection has existed even before uh, that, you know, hundreds of years, given the relationship between, you know, the trade relationship between the, Arab uh, the Arabian Peninsula and India. Uh, and we are now building on that. We're building on that connection, on that relationship, in a way that is not just benefiting both of us, it's really benefiting uh, the international uh, community. We have similar political outlooks. We believe uh, both of our countries very strongly in the need for multilateralism, in the need for cooperation, in the need to avoid uh, polarization, mm -hmm. to avoid mm -hmm. uh, you know this uh, 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 politics of uh, not just bipolar, just you know this focus on uh, narrow interests uh, mm -hmm. against uh, the interests of the whole. So in, you know India has taken a very strong stance on that. The kingdom is also uh, is taking a very uh, important uh, position on that. And given our leadership role in the Arab and Muslim world and you know, India's huge size, that all offers very much uh, great potential. A huge amount of India's trade to Europe passes through mm -hmm. uh, the Red mm -hmm. Sea, and there we have a uh, relationship. Uh, the potential, I think, given the strong alignment uh, politically, but also economically, 
uh, is very significant. We are, of course, India's uh, most important uh, energy partner. As that's mm -hmm. the case for uh, um, traditional energies, but we are also looking uh, to continue that into the renewable uh, mm -hmm. era. We're working uh, you know, w both on renewable projects in India, but also on just how do we uh, 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 potentially even connect, for instance, our grid links, et cetera. So there's a lot that we can do together. And then, of course, the uh, future is in technology, and mm -hmm. India is a global leader in uh, technology. The kingdom is investing hugely in building its own capacities, their research development, so uh, uh, building the relationship between our institutions. All so the potential is endless, really. Prince Vessel, um, there are two areas on international relations and our joint approaches there, which mm -hmm. I think perhaps you may want to know, learn from you more about. Mm -hmm. The first, of course, is what is the potential of an India-Saudi Arabia partnership for Africa? Mm -hmm. uh, not only um, is Saudi Arabia going to be important for energy and investments, mm -hmm. but I think it is going to be the bridge or the hub uh, which could connect uh, you know, the African continent, which is again a very dynamic continent mm -hmm. of the future, and uh, South and East Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, and is Saudi Arabia thinking of that role of, of actually um, in, in creating a framework mm -hmm. that will allow countries like India mm -hmm. to work with Saudi Arabia, to work with the African continent? So that's one part, yeah. the future of our partnership in Africa. Mm -hmm. And the second part is um, how can India and Saudi Arabia, which now seem to be the adults in the room, uh, who seem to be the more sane voices in a in a in a club that is very rhetorical? Uh -huh. How can we work together on the international dynamics that exist today, uh, smoothening the nerves when it comes to the conflict in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, pacifying aggression in East Asia? How can we work together in these two big areas, mm -hmm. uh, conflict areas that the world seems to be entering into the conflict phase, the world seems to be entering into, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the new uh, opportunities that. A continent like Africa presents all of us. So we are very, very bullish about Africa. We in the kingdom, we think that the, the potential in Africa is tremendous. And uh, of course, we are, uh, you know, we have a traditionally very strong relationship with Africa. We already have very uh, good connections uh, to the African continent. And we are working on building those connections even uh, further, both through trade routes and otherwise. And a partnership with India in that regard makes uh, immense uh, sense because, uh, you know, we can be uh, the bridge for. Uh, all of Asia really into Africa and vice versa, because you know, as Africa continues to grow economically, as it continues to build its capacity, it will not just be a consumer, it will also eventually be a producer. And that offers tremendous opportunities for trade in both directions. And you know, we believe, and this links to your second part of the question a, a little bit, we believe in the kingdom very strongly that we need to help enable uh, uh, all of us in the developing world to work together mm -hmm. to strengthen our uh, you know capacities across the board to less you know a lot of countries talk about uh, you know the supply chain and things like that but we are the most vulnerable to those challenges in the development world because you know uh, right now we uh, we don't have all of the capacities to resist crises in that mm -hmm. area but the more we build our own capacities the more we diversify the supply chain into the developing world and you know build those first of all that increases economic growth that builds new uh, consumer consumption etc so that's beneficial but it also insulates us from all of the challenges uh, that the future holds uh, you know in this increasingly polarized world and you know that leads into the second part of your question it's incredibly important that we continue to have a voice of reason, that we continue to emphasize uh, the importance of cooperation and dialogue mm -hmm. rather than confrontation and competition. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the kingdom is, uh, as part of its uh, leadership role in the Arab world and the Muslim world, uh, continuing to raise the voice uh, in that uh, regard. You know, we believe, again, as I said, first of all, uh, you know, we cannot allow the global agenda to be set by uh, a minority of states. Everybody has to have a voice. Everybody has to have a, a stake. And you know, countries like the kingdom, countries like India, that have the capacity because of their size and their economic heft to uh, amplify the voices of others, have a responsibility to do so. And uh, obviously, if we work together, that becomes even more effective. That becomes even more uh, impactful. So we will continue to work uh, with India to make sure that the interests of everybody are represented uh, when we set the global agenda and uh, especially on the economic front again you know there are challenges uh, that are coming that we don't understand mm -hmm. yet for instance what uh, you know what does ai mean, uh, mean? Uh, you know what uh, you know if we allow for instance the regulatory framework to be developed uh, without the inputs of so, everyone right. 
that will create, create huge disadvantages right. in the coming decades uh, for uh, the developing world uh, that could almost if you you know if you listen to some of the scientists that could equal it could be equal to the resource uh, 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 challenges that came out of colonization. So we have to be very careful that mm -hmm. we make sure that everybody's voice is heard. A very important point. L let me um, ask you my final question, mm -hmm. which I think uh, is something that we have been thinking about at the foundation, but also other institutions in India have been thinking about it. When, the, when America in the previous century mm -hmm. began its journey as an influential, influential country, eventually became a superpower, mm -hmm. and for a brief moment was... Uh, riding the unipolar moment uh -huh. as uh, the sole superpower, uh -huh. uh, there was something else that accompanied the rise of America. Uh -huh. It was of the cultural industry. Uh -huh. Bollywood, literature, uh -huh. universities, schools. You had a whole institutional framework that allowed America and American thought and American views and American reality uh -huh. to be made available to millions and billions around the world. As Asia rises... Uh -huh. Where are those institutions? Who's going to tell those stories? Who's going to make those movies? Mm -hmm. Who's going to share our mm -hmm. lived experiences? And do you think even as we obsess with investments in infrastructure and connectivity and industry and renewables, we also have to invest in the, the art of telling our stories? Uh, I'm glad you asked that question. That's a, it's an incredibly important uh, matter. Uh, and you're right. Uh, uh, you know, we have been historically, the globe has been dominated by uh, not just America, but by an Anglo-Saxon uh, cultural perspective. Uh, and that has uh, been uh, uh, positive in some ways, but it's also uh, marginalized some of the important voices. Mm -hmm. And now you see, as you said, with the rise of Asia, you see a lot of that changing. Already uh, India, Bollywood has already historically had a very strong footprint and that's increasing. Uh, uh, South Korea is also very active, China, etc. Uh, and you can see that if, even in the kingdom, you know, if, uh, when a Bollywood mm -hmm. star mm -hmm. comes to the kingdom, they are uh, overwhelmed uh, uh, with, uh, uh, you know, with fans and supporters. It's the same, you know, we had a uh, a uh, Korean uh, K-pop uh, yes, band come into yes. the kingdom a, a year or so ago, and the tickets were sold three t uh, sold out three times over. And a hundred thousand people mm -hmm. attended the concert. So all of that means that there is a thirst in the kingdom, but also globally, for a diverse cultural perspective. And we are very cognizant of that, and that's why we are investing heavily also in telling our own story mm -hmm. and making sure that we can tell it to the world. So the kingdom is uh, as one of the key parts of Vision 2030 is activating the cultural space, is activating uh, uh, the access for our young creators to be mm -hmm. able to really tell the stories of Saudi Arabia. And you've mm -hmm. seen uh, an exponential growth in the last uh, uh, five years of uh, Saudi movies coming uh, uh, to the global scene, Saudi uh, television productions, etc. But you know, we are very interested into having this dialogue. That's why we are very uh, um, keen when we open, you know, when we've opened our entertainment industry and our entertainment sector to global mm. uh, conversations. And you know, that's why as, you know we have K-pop, Indian bands, etc. Uh, because we need to make sure that we have a real dialogue between all of our populations, so that the you know, all of the globe really mm -hmm. has to have this dialogue, so that there is a more internationally uh, uh, driven uh, cultural space that. That also then helps build towards a better understanding of each other on a human level, which can prevent also in the future conflict, which can mm -hmm. prevent a crisis. But the cultural space is incredibly important and that's a huge opportunity as well. My understanding is that there are two Bollywood movies that are coming out this year that were filmed in Saudi Arabia, ah. uh, uh, at least partially, partially filmed, yeah. uh, f filmed in parts of Saudi Arabia. You know, that again, it's another linkage between Vision 2030 and the potential it offers and uh, India and, you know, uh, what we can do together. Prince Faisal, thank you so much for joining joining us at the Raisina Dialogue and, of course, at the Raisina Ideas Pod. I hope uh, we will see many movies uh, that our uh, populations make in each other's countries. Mm. I hope there are many movies we make together mm. because the Asian story will be co-scripted uh, by a number of uh, very wise people. And I must congratulate the Saudi government for its um, bold decisions to open up, transform, and create a vision for the future. I'm sure it will benefit the whole of Asia and indeed uh, the entire world. And uh, thank you so much for joining us at the Dialogue, and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.